Hello everyone, it's Trina here from thereisacardforthat.ca and today I'm going to be making a relatively clean and simple reveal wheel birthday card. Um, I had made one before, you may have seen it on the blog, and I didn't do a video for that one because I wanted to see just how easy to use this die set from Lawn Fawn is. And let me tell you guys, <laughs> this thing is so intuitive. Like... Sometimes when you have a die set that is interactive, you have to watch the instructions a couple of times before you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then you kind of fall into a rhythm with this. Like, yes, of course, I watch the videos. It's lawn fun. I'm going to watch the videos. But with this one, I didn't feel like I needed to rewatch any videos, if that makes sense, because this one, it's so simple. I mean, I've made reveal wheels before, but... Let me tell you guys, this is genius. So I had pre-cut all of the pieces that I needed, and I don't take apart the reveal wheel and the little center and the little arrow, because there's just no point. You're going to cut them all out anyway, and then why not? Why not keep them together? Then you won't lose them. So what I had done was I made little tick marks at, like, if it were a clock, at the 12, 3, 6, and 9 positions around the wheel reveal wheel, lined it up through the little window, and then drew a little light pencil mark through the window so I would know where to stamp these greetings from the reveal wheel sentiments. Um, also, reveal wheel, <laughs> say that a lot, it gets really hard. <laughs> Just do it. Do it right now. <laughs> so I'm stamping these in Memento Tuxedo bl Black Ink and uh, just with an acrylic block and then I'm going to take my white eraser and very carefully erase along the lines. What I learned in my first reveal wheel card is that you don't want to just go erasing all willy-nilly all the way across the across the thing when your ink isn't dry because it'll smear. <laughs> Which one would think is common sense but not for me apparently. I've been out of my art room for so long. It has been so crazy and apparently I just, I just forget things that everybody knows. So quick reminder, whether you're in your art room every day or whether you're in your art room once a month, be careful because your ink is wet. <laughs> so I lined that up again and I used a piece of post-it tape to hold it in place. And then I am cutting just some foam squares out of my dollar store roll of mounting tape and you want to put those on the smaller wheel without touching the brad because if the brad sticks that's bad and you want to go around and you don't want it to go onto the big wheel because the big wheel is what spins and that's important too. So then I'm going to line up the two panels so that they're all nice and perfect. Squish it flat and then you can kind of slip into the back here and pull that out and then the back of your panel is essentially done. So now we can work on the front panel here and I decided I was going to use the brand new like a month to everybody else but like brand new to me because it's been forever. <laughs> Critters in Concert by Lawn Fawn and this is going to be super clean and super simple. Uh, we're going to use some sentiments above and below the reveal wheel. Um, and I'm going to stamp those with Memento Tuxedo Black ink again. And all of my die cuts were done out of 110 pound Copic friendly cardstock. I don't use any special cardstock. My cardstock is like the Staples brand. Um, so just like a regular stationery store. I don't know if you have Staples in, in, the, in the Americas. But in Canada, we have Staples. And it's just their store brand and I get like 250 sheets for 20 bucks and it's fantastic. I use it for all of my card pieces. Like I don't have layering weight and anything like that. Like unless it's light colored because then it's 65 pounds. But for everything else, if it's white card stock, it's going to be 110 pounds because it's nice and sturdy. And that's, it's nice to have a card that feels nice and sturdy in your hand. So we're going to use the bear with the trumpet and the little fox with the French horn because that's just so cute. <laughs> I just couldn't even resist. I wanted to do like all of them 
but of course all of them won't fit. So there might be a second one, not in this video, there's only one in this video, but a second one in another video where it's like the little raccoon playing the flute or the owl playing the violin. <laughs> How cute is that? If I were to picture an animal, like an owl playing an instrument, it'd probably be a violin because it's classy. And animal, <laughs> owls to me are <laughs> super classy. I don't know why. Anyway, so those are being stamped again with Memento Tuxedo Black ink because we are going to color this in with Copic markers. And I am going to start with the French horns. And I wasn't sure because I wanted them to have that brassy gold color, but not like the super shiny gold because that's not right. So I had played around a little bit and I found that E44 and Y28 make a lovely, like, older brassy color. So I'm adding the E44 into my darkest areas where I want the shadows to be and then I'm just going over the whole thing with the Y28 because we all know like this is me. They're going to be shiny later on. <laughs> but there's not a lot of embellishments because it is a clean and simple card. For my bear, I wanted him like a honey bear which is just a brown bear that's really light. <laughs> or a black bear, because I guess technically I think they all fall under the black bear category. But he's like super, super light. And so I'm just going to add the colors in here. And I use E43, E42, and then E30, just to make him make him really, really nice and light. And I wanted, I didn't want it, his trumpet to be like lost against him if I had done like a regular dark bear, brown bear. I also considered making him a panda, which would have been really, really cute. And maybe the next time I do him, he'll be a, a panda. I don't know. For my fox, in the white areas, I use C3, C1, and 0 to like blend that out. And I have some serious trouble with fox colors. I know I've talked about this before. It hasn't changed. I still have, I still have these, these issues. I'm like, oh, is that too brown? Is that too orange? Is that too, is that too not fox colored? Which is silly, right? Because I mean, a fox could be any color. Like I could color him blue and be like, yeah, he's a blue fox. <laughs> and my kids would be like, oh, that's awesome. There's a blue fox. Mom, make a purple fox. And I'd be like, okay. But when I want to color him actual fox colors, <laughs> it's so hard for me. So here I am. Testing out new fox colors again. I mean, I have go-tos for like pretty much everything I do, but for foxes, I don't know what it is. I see them online, but maybe it's because I don't have like the E09 and like those orangey earth tone colors. And maybe that's why it's just so difficult for me. <laughs> I don't know, but I think he turned out pretty cute. In retrospect, though, I probably would have done him as, like, a winter fox. So, like, really light blue. <laughs> Just because the orange ends up being the only real pop of color in this card. And so I feel like it's not as balanced as it could be. I still like the card, and I'm super pleased with it because you can spin the little wheel, and I love interactive cards. Um... But it's just something I would probably have done. I would have probably thought out my color scheme a little bit better. Just just for balance. And then for the shadows, I'm going to use the warm gray markers in W7, W5, and W3. Um, just to diffuse those out. And as you can see right there under the fox's tail with that W5, I got super enthusiastic. I'm like, whoa, big shadow. And I don't know why. Like, I probably could have fixed it, but I didn't want to, like, blot out the whole card. And you know what? We all make mistakes. Like... I've been making cards for six-ish years now and coloring since I was like two. So I don't want to age myself, but it's a long time. And uh, you still make mistakes. So I decided I was going to leave it in because it is what it is. It's a handmade card. I mean, people ought to expect that things are not going to be absolutely pristine and perfect when you create a handmade card. And we're really the hardest on ourselves. Like, you guys probably wouldn't even have noticed that if I didn't say it out loud. Like, now it's probably all you can see because it's all I can see. But it is what it is. You got to do what makes you happy and coloring shadows like a crazy person <laughs> apparently makes me super happy. Uh, to put the whole mechanism together, I'm using the same thickness of foam tape 
on the back panel around the reveal wheel. And you kind of got to cut it down. Like it looks like a hot mess. I really try and make it nice so that if somebody for whatever reason does decide to like look and say like, Ooh, how'd they pop it up? That it's like nice smooth rows of, of tape when I'm generally popping something up. Not so much with this one. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so I'm just going to remove all of the backing pieces from that. And then you just put the top piece all lined up straight on top and your mechanism is done. This die is brilliant. Like I've done one before and it took me forever, forever to figure out what I was doing and figure out placement and figure out spinning and this. They're genius. They're genius over at Lawn Fawn. I don't know how they do it. And then I'm going to use my dollar store tape runner to pop that onto the front of a standard A2 side folding card base. Uh, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And then I'm going to use this super fun little turn me thing from the reveal wheel sentiments. Um, just so everybody knows. I mean, I'm pretty sure they would know, but it's really fun to use those stamps anyway. And uh, yeah, then we can spin it and it it's so smooth. It's so smooth and it goes around and it's just lovely. And now we're going to add some embellishments because it's me. <laughs> so I, I took it easy. All I did was add some clear Wink of Stella over top of the, the horns, the trumpet and the French horn, some, uh, just to give it some sparkle because it's metal, it's going to sparkle. And in my world, animals playing instruments sparkle. It makes sense, right? And then we're going to put some glossy accents over top of the thing because glossy accents makes Wink of Stella sparkle more. And, and they're shiny. <laughs> because... Of course, animals are going to have super shiny instruments. <laughs> Might live in a forest, but they're going to take care of their stuff, right? <laughs> so, and I'm just being really careful here um, because French horns, if you've ever seen one in real life, pretty intricate. And I think that they captured it really well, despite how small this is. So, I'm just going to do that. And that's really, I think, I, I think, because I filmed this a couple days ago. Yeah, I think, I think that's where I stop. So, very few embellishments when it comes to a card by Trina. So that is our card for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and click on over to my blog and my Facebook page. I hope you have a great day. Bye!